All right, thank you very much for having me. Those of you who have seen uh, Dr. Chesson's Maintenance is for Losers debate know that I'm up against somebody who can give a spirited debate. I'll do my best to argue for our chemotherapy in this patient. So why should we start our chemotherapy in somebody with low tumor burden, low flippy uh, follicular lymphoma? So I would argue that early initiation of rituximab chemotherapy may make people live longer, and it may improve quality of life. These are our goals when we give chemotherapy. So when we look at the uh, initiating, initiating events of follicular lymphoma, the 14-18 translocation likely happens in a, a bone marrow cell. And then that cell leaves the bone marrow and starts entering lymph nodes. And it will circle through these lymph nodes multiple times, each time accumulating new genetic mutations and becoming a little bit more diverse until eventually that cell acquires sufficient number of mutations to actually evolve into a true lymphoma. Uh, clearly, none of us are so naive to believe that those mutations then stop the minute the lymphoma cell becomes a lymphoma cell. In fact, we know that follicular lymphoma, cell, uh, ha, follicular lymphoma cells have acquired uh, somatic hypermutation with constant activation of AID and undergo ongoing mutations throughout their lifespan. This is just a, a, a schema of what happens with cancer in general, and I think we all recognize that cancer, by the time it becomes clinically apparent, is not one disease, but in fact is made up of multiple subclones. Obviously, the more subclones there are, and this has been proven in multiple cancers, the more aggressive the disease has the potential to become, the more likely there are potentially some cells that are uh, resistant to chemotherapy. So for example, in large cell lymphoma, it's been shown that uh, genetic diversity is associated with a poor outcome, and epigenetic diversity is also associated with a poor outcome. So treating somebody at an earlier point in time before these subclones have the potential to arise theoretically may uh, reduce the incidence of chemotherapy resistance. <clears throat> so these are the studies that I think Dr. Chesson will show to uh, suggest that uh, treatment of patients is not actually worthwhile, but there are a couple of things that I'd like to point out. First of all, uh, you look at the overall survival in these trials that looked at clarambucil versus observation. I recognize he's all going to argue for rituximab, but uh, these, these overall survival uh, curves showed uh, observ or observation patients lived only about six or seven years. We're, we're closer to 18, 19, 20 years in follicular lymphoma. So this patient population was clearly a different patient population than the patient population most of us are seeing now. Whether that's all accounted for by lead time bias or something, I'm not sure. But it's essentially a different patient population with different treatments. So clarambucil and pre uh, prednimustine, which is essentially prednisone ester with uh, clarambucil, are both insufficient chemotherapy drugs. I think we all recognize that. They do a very good job of controlling lymphoma cells and killing some lymphoma cells, but they're like, unlikely to eradicate uh, subclones, right? If our goal is to eradicate these chemotherapy-resistant subclones, those drugs are not likely to do it. The one trial that did evaluate a chemotherapy regimen that might have been considered more aggressive, this promace mop actually accrued only about 100 patients. Only 40 were in each arm observation versus promace mop And there was no uh, difference in overall survival, but that was with only about 40 months of follow-up. And when you look at the power that that study would have had to have had to uh, find a difference in overall survival, there would have had to have been a hazard ratio of almost three. So literally, you would have to look at a, a, a survival uh, that was 300% th better in the uh, promace mop uh, group compared to the observation group. So the, power, the study was essentially under power to show a difference there. So when we look at uh, rituximab, obviously rituximab does prolong time to initiation of treatment compared to observation. Interestingly, it also shows, you'll see, and I'll show you another uh, study so shortly, that uh, there was a decreased rate of histologic transformation in patients that were receiving rituximab compared to observation, suggesting again that early initiation of treatment may actually eradicate some uh, subclones. <coughs> uh, chemotherapy plus rituximab has been shown to improve overall survival compared to chemotherapy alone. So we're more likely to eradicate more subclones by giving those two together, potentially. We know that we accept widely that in other, other diseases, especially infectious diseases, that combination therapy is superior to sequential therapy. Uh, 
So why is this not true in oncology? I think that it may be true in oncology, it just hasn't necessarily been tested with the right drugs. There is a study that does suggest that watchful waiting may be inferior to active therapy uh, in some patients. So here we look at a group of uh, patients in the LymphoCare study, right? Uh, which was a national uh, study around the United States of patients treated in academic centers and uh, community centers. And essentially, uh, you know, a quarter or less than a quarter of patients were uh, treated by their physicians for whatever reason with observation, and a group of patients were treated actively. Presumably, the patients that were watched in wait had a less aggressive uh, disease course. And so the study investigators looked at outcomes depending on um, uh, their course of therapy. So importantly, uh, there's PFS, right, which is obviously going to be longer in the group of patients that had active therapy. If you treat somebody, they're going to take a longer time to progress than if you don't treat somebody. Then they looked also at the PFS for patients after they had required another therapy. So this was PFS active, and also the PFS uh, to second therapy. And interestingly, what they showed that in both groups, the active therapy, so if you were treated and then treated again, uh, your PFS, uh, that second decision, was longer in active therapy, or longer if you were actively treated than if you were watched. Second, that time to the second decision was also longer in active therapy than watch and wait. There was no uh, difference in overall survival, but again, this may be that the uh, our chemotherapy or active therapy group had a more aggressive disease course and that's why they were observed. So again, this sort of ongoing suggestion that potentially early effective therapy may eliminate subclones and uh, improve survival. Again, uh, looking at the LymphoCare study, early treatment or active therapy uh, reduced the incidence of histologic transformation compared to observation. So my interpretation of this data is that early initiation of our chemotherapy is unlikely to cure follicular lymphoma. I think that's true. However, it's possible that early initiation of uh, our chemotherapy may cull potentially dangerous subclones prior to evolution of new resistance mechanisms. I think, look, it's true that chemotherapy could theoretically damage DNA and induce new mutations. We don't have evidence yet that those mutations are actually dangerous, but it probably does happen. Uh, nonetheless, we also know if you take cells, lymphoma cells, for example, in the lab, and you expose them to chronic low doses of rituximab, we know that those cells evolve to develop um, uh, rituximab resistance. So it may be possible that just giving multi-agent chemotherapy for a short period of time, we may end up with fewer resistant cells than giving them single-agent long-term therapy over a longer period of time. So what about uh, quality of life? Well, first of all, is there such thing as a functional cure? So how long can somebody with low-risk flippy, low tumor burden, follicular lymphoma expect to be in remission after RCHOP chemotherapy? We don't really have that answer, but when you look at the survival, again, uh, of people with follicular lymphoma, we're clearly getting better. So we're probably getting better at treating uh, some patients with the addition of rituximab to chemotherapy. When we look at uh, RCHOP, in low flippy patients, uh, in a prospective study, uh, this was people who actually probably required therapy, you'll see that the low risk flippy patients uh, did very well. And again, bendamustine rituximab patients, also looking at their time, or PFS is out, you can see 70% at 96 months. So pretty, pretty good. This is in patients who actually required therapy to get on that study. This is uh, again from the LymphoCare study looking at uh, uh, time to next treatment based on flippy score. So again, you know, close to 70% out at 96 months. So my interpretation is that early initiation of our chemotherapy in patients with low tumor burden, low flippy risk is likely to result in a median time to next treatment of a decade or more. So what about quality of life, right? So these are a couple of things that we uh, know from randomized studies compared to watchful waiting group in follicular lymphoma. Patients receiving maintenance rituximab had significant improvements in mental adjustment to cancer and illness coping style. So that was in the rituximab versus observational study. And then in the resort study that compared uh, early rituximab uh, with retreatment compared to rituximab uh, maintenance, there was, a, there was really no difference in the long term in terms of quality of life. So early treatment seemed to potentially improve quality of life, but ongoing rituximab maintenance didn't make a, an additional uh, difference. So I will uh, freely give up the point that, qual uh, pardon me, I'll back up there. Uh, 
quality of life in people receiving chemotherapy uh, measured by the FACT limb is worse than people not receiving chemotherapy. But chemotherapy lasts only 18 weeks or six months of your bendamustine rituximab compared to uh, long-term rituximab maintenance, right? So what about uh, uh, people looking uh, uh, longer term? So this study looked at quality of life, multiple different quality of life measures at different points in time in people with follicular lymphoma. So disease-free, nobody is clearly disease-free in follicular lymphoma, but they qualified disease-free as somebody that was in a complete remission for more than two assessments. So if they were assessed once, they were in a complete remission. If they were assessed again and were now still in a complete remission, they were disease-free. So first of all, when you look at people who are disease-free and compare them to when they first present with their lymphoma, there's a significant reduction in the active impairment due to health. So people that present with lymphoma may have some symptoms. Uh, people that are in a complete remission for a long-term period of time have fewer symptoms. What about com people who are, uh, compared to people who are, uh, have lymphoma or are treated and then relapse, right? So this is clearly the case of somebody that's going to get rituximab who may be in a remission for 18 months on average. Uh, those people will eventually relapse and their quality of life in general is better if they are disease-free. What about patients who are treated with rituximab and in a partial response? Again, quality of life is better if they're disease-free. In fact, even if they are in a complete response, their quality of life is better if they're disease-free. So the idea is that the longer somebody is in a complete response, the better, the better their quality of life. So my interpretation is that our chemotherapy is likely to temporarily reduce their quality of life, but the longer somebody's in remission, the better they are likely to feel. So, Early, early initiation of chemotherapy might, pe might make people live longer. I think it's clear, it's intuitive that future therapies will need to be applied earlier if we're likely to be most effective with them. We don't know if our chemotherapy is sufficient to prevent or delay clonal evolution in real life, but I think we can say that less effective therapies are not effective. Observation clearly never uh, cured anyone. Early, initi early initiation of our chemotherapy may improve quality of life because it leads to long uh, remission durations. So that's it for me, and uh, we'll see what Dr. Chesson has to say. Thanks.